All right, we got uh, Butler this week coming to town, uh, playoff team last year. Uh, Jeff Forrest has done a very good job there. They got off to a win last week, beat Wittenberg. And uh, I think a couple things stick out. Uh, they're very creative offensively, uh, try to uh, outgap you, uh, whether it be with a quarterback run, uh, run pass conflicts, those type of things. And then uh, defensively, I think the glaring thing that stuck out from the first game was is they were uh, Heavy blitz, uh, brought a lot of pressure basically almost every play. Uh, had 10 sacks on the day. I don't know the last time I've seen a team have 10 sacks in one game, so uh, they did a good job there. So they'll be here at 4 o'clock and get ready to play, and I'm sure they'll be excited to be here, and uh, we'll be excited to have another home game here uh, in Ice Castle. What's uh, Dante's status? Uh, I'd say he's probable right now. Uh, as of yesterday, at 5 o'clock when I saw him, he said he felt 100 times better than he did on Sunday. So uh, being this Tuesday, I'd say he's probable for the game. Would you uh, want to keep him out just as a precaution? Well, you know, I think it's going to be a judgment call how much practice he can get in on Wednesday and Thursday. You know, it's a situation where we got Hunter Wells, uh, Ricky Davis. Those guys all took reps yesterday, and we feel good about those guys too. Uh, Dante's a uh, guy that will probably make a decision on Thursday, something like that. Ideally, would you like to play multiple quarterbacks? I'd like to. You know, I, I'd like to get Hunter Wells in, in the game where he can have a chance to throw the ball around a little bit. Uh, he's a guy that obviously moved all the way up to the number two spot, got confidence in him. And, uh, you know, he's a good football player. And, you know, Ricky Davis, we were kind of doing some things with him at receiver uh, for a little while, getting him some action there. and. Uh, put him back at quarterback yesterday, and, and you, you can see why uh, we liked him during spring ball uh, as far as just strong arm, athletic guy, and can run and throw. Coach, you mentioned Butler was a playoff team last year. Mm -hmm. They got in with an automatic berth from a conference that, that you know, clearly is inferior to most of the rest of FBS in terms of you know, overall quality, lack of scholarships, and all that. Um, a, does that burn you a little bit? That Well, I think when the when you look at the playoffs, one of the reasons that they wanted to originally expand it was is to get more teams in. Uh, they felt like there were teams out there that uh, weren't getting opportunities, and uh, you know they did expand the playoffs. Uh, it didn't benefit our conference in, in any way. Uh, benefited a lot of other people, but uh, you know I, I just know that uh, regardless of who we play. Uh, we respect everyone we play, and uh, they were a playoff team last year. And I think Jeff Forrest does a very good job there uh, with his football team. So uh, we're, whether we're playing Illinois, Duquesne, uh, or Butler, we treat everyone the same. Uh, we respect them, and we really focus on what we need to do to continue to grow and uh, become a better football team. And second question, as far as their talent goes, uh, you know, we went back and watched all the way back. They played South Dakota State the first game of the year, I believe, last year. So we watched all the way back to that game and then uh, watched them, obviously, this year on one game. And then we watched some of their games from last year. And uh, they're a good football team. They're well coached. Their kids play hard. Uh, because they're non-scholarship, uh, you know, my brother went to Mount Union. That was a non-scholarship school, too. But those schools have creative ways of finding money for kids uh, to go to school. Uh, a lot of it's need-based or academic based. So uh, there's guys on their football team that, uh, you know, I'm sure other teams would like to have. You look at, I mean, you had an extra home game each of the last three years, or two years. Do you, in hindsight, do you wish maybe you had added a full scholarship FCS team? You know, I, I don't really do uh, the scheduling as far as, uh, you know, the non-conference. I do solicit the money games. Um, that's something that I am pretty involved in. but. Uh, Jim Morrison, uh, I, I think Jim heads it up. I believe Trevor and, and Ron and those guys handle the scheduling for the most part. I just go out and try to get the, the money games uh, as far as whether it's West Virginia, uh, you know, Pitt, uh, Illinois, schools like that. Eric, with all due respect, there was a lot of talk yesterday on talk radio that people aren't coming to the games because of the schedule. Um, how do you sell the game? How do you sell well, the game? How do you sell the schedule? Well, I think the thing is, is uh, obviously if you're, you're, you're a Youngstown State Penguin fan, I mean, you enjoy seeing your kids play. Uh, we have a ton of kids that are within our radius, whether it's Cleveland or Pittsburgh. I mean, we have a ton of kids in that region, 
and there's a lot of kids here on our football team uh, that are that are playing. And uh, you know, you support your team. You know, when we're at South Carolina or Alabama, I mean, it doesn't you know you don't really necessarily worry about who you're playing. You go to support your team, and uh, you know that's part of being a being a fan. So, how do you fix the empty seat situation if the non-conference schedule isn't attractive? Well, I think we've got to talk to the weathermen. You know, those guys have a lot of control. If we can get to keep the rain out, and then uh, probably keep our tailgate lots uh, not so much fun, we could probably get another slew of people to come in to the games too. So that'd probably be two solutions that I'd recommend to see if you guys could get done. But you wouldn't include scheduling a full scholarship FCF team? I, we, could, we could play another money game. I mean, it'd be good to get like Akron or Ken or Bowling Green or, you know, somebody like that on the schedule. Uh, you know, that'd be something that if you guys could get that done, it'd be good. How, how do those discussions take place? Well, the money game, uh, I mean, you know. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, you're not, you have the money game and then the other non I'm 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 just given a contract and I sign it. <laughs> That's all I do, and I put my initials by it. So you have no conversation with Mr. Strollo about this? I don't have any conversation about who we play, other than trying to find the the most amount of money for one game a year. Coach, a couple of uh, uh, players that were in here talking about the, the defense said that um, the defense came out, or the team as a whole actually came out a little uh, flat in the second. team that has struggled in the second half uh, almost traditionally now for a while. How has that not been figured out? Well, I think uh, the second half, you know, you look at last week, we jumped out to obviously a big lead there and uh, a little bit of that's human nature. Probably start to feel a little bit good about yourself. You know, we if you, if you take away the fumble that we had there with uh, Martin down near the end zone there, and then instead of kicking the field goal, if we convert that one third down, you know, it's probably 42, 42 points there. So we were having success uh, early. And, you know, in the first half defensively, we had a lot of success. And then the second half, uh, we came out and we allowed uh, some big, big plays on defense. That was the glaring thing that showed up in, in between the first half and second half. They had. I forget exactly how many big plays that they had, and they were better on third down at converting those. Uh, you know, at one point there, uh, they had driven the ball a little bit, and then Jalen Kelly re had an interception. So we take it back, and then they recover the ball. So in a period of 19 to 20, 20 plays there, they ended up only scoring. Uh, they missed a field goal. So, you know, that's a good thing in the fact that our defense was out there for. 19 or 20 plays in a row and able to hold them to zero. But, uh, you know, we, we know we have to play better in the second half. Uh, and that starts with us as coaches at halftime, you know, getting getting guys' motors running, making sure they're ready to roll. Uh, and then I think we have to do a better job of executing. You know, on offense, I didn't think we helped ourselves uh, on defense specifically by sustaining any drives. You know, we had a uh, in the second half there, we had a third and one that we didn't convert. Uh, we had a third and six that we didn't get the ball. Uh, you know, hit, we didn't hit our target, I guess you would say. And then we had a pressure uh, where we had to settle for a field goal. And that's basically uh, two, three huge situations that happened there on third down. And that stems from being probably a little bit better on first down as far as not getting behind the change. Now that you looked at both games, I asked you on Saturday after the game, did you play a better game at Illinois or, or a better game against Duquesne? Uh, we played a better first half against Duquesne. You know, I mean, against Duquesne, uh, we were executing at a high level. Uh, you know, we were playing fast. I, I was excited about that part of it. Second half, I was really uh, upset about our uh, third down execution. Uh, our overall third down execution is not what uh, we expect it to be. Our third down production has been uh, really below average uh, as far as our standards go. And then uh, in the red zone, you know, as far as getting touchdowns, we, we just, we, we, we normally function at a higher rate than that. And that's something that uh, we've got to do a better job of there. But in the second half, and we, if we can sustain some drives and stuff like that, our defense is on the sideline, their offense is on the sideline, and uh, we can play a much better second half. And 
that's kind of a good thing going into this next week. Uh, instead of having a blowout game where you got to get guys' attention, you know, there's there wasn't one guy that when we walked in there on Monday and gave out our awards for the week. I mean, you would have thought that we lost a football game, and that's a good sign because uh, our kids know that we can. We should play. We should play like we did in the first half uh, for 60 minutes. We, we have that kind of a team. I know we, uh, how much of your secondary bag? Uh, we're going to put Michael Zordich out there in uh, 36. We're going to just keep help over the top at all times. But uh, right now, uh, Julius Childs is good to go. Nate Dorch is probable. Uh, Eric Thompson is probable. Uh, and then you got Dion Hall. He should be fine. DJ Thomas, the freshman, got some uh, got a lot of action. And then uh, you know we've been working on backup plans, playing Donald. Trey Moore has actually played recently so uh, we've told those guys this week going into the game between him and Jamil Smith whoever has the better week of practice uh, one of those two guys is going to get the nod so that's pretty much back to an even competition there and uh, we've been excited about some things recently that Trey's done and uh, put some pressure on Jamil to, to do some things better like we expect him. And then Durden is still, Durden's, uh, still getting his paperwork done you know uh, who knows it could happen today. I know we asked you about your schedule. Can you tell me about Incarnate Word or whatever the North Dakota State's playing? Have you ever even heard of that? I have not. You know, uh, you think the the fans will be there? <laughs> the fans. <laughs> the uh, but uh, no, they got uh, ESPN Game Day there though, so that's a, that's a good thing, and they're doing a good job and rolling. So we don't play those guys till the end of the year though. So we'll focus on Butler right now and focus on Youngstown State today, getting better. Coach, with the, all the criteria they take into consideration, the selection committee at the end of the year, and the status that this conference has, do you feel the pressure to not just win, but win convincingly against a team like Butler? Well, you know, I, I, I used to think that I kind of had an idea of the way those selection things would go, and uh, obviously I do not. But, uh, <laughs> the, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, you can go back the last three years. Uh, we finished tied for second last year. We don't get in. Uh, the year before, uh, I believe, you know, we had uh, a big win against Pitt, beat Indiana State, have a better record than them. They were supposed to get in, us, them, you know, and then we don't. Go back a year before that, we finished strong. You know, so I, I, who knows? I, I, don't, I don't have the formula. I know it's a hot topic of discussion at the Missouri Valley Conference, and all I know is what we can control, and that's playing well uh, and getting better, so that way when we get into conference play, uh, we can function at a high level. Something I think maybe got overlooked with the injury in the second half, the way the second half went was how well Dante played in that first half, you know, a couple of passes from you know, right on the money. And he played well, you know, and uh, when people load the box up, obviously, on, and uh, I think people know that we like to run the football. Uh, they like to get those safeties down in there and, and stop the run. I think it opens up those big play opportunities. Uh, you're not able to keep too high, play one high, and uh, that, that's a that's a good thing as far as people respecting our run game. Uh, at the same time, you know, you got to be able to hit those. You got to be able to protect them. But uh, Dante was doing some good things, and you know, Dante's. Uh, Dante's a good football player. It's the reason why we named him our starter, and it's unfortunate. It was just kind of a – didn't really even get hit on the play. So, but uh, he'll be back, and uh, we should be good to go. Your first win here came against Butler. Uh, do you have a special package for them or anything? Or? No. No. No packages. As far as trick plays? Well, yeah, no. Okay. No, we just, we're just trying to get better and, and get some third down conversions. How about that? Do you remember that they were your first win? You no, you know what? It's been so long ago. Uh, I just kind of try to stay in the moment. I mean, that's you know, that's where I kind of live. I live in a little insulated world. That uh, someone asked me if I saw the commercial. Me and Dana, I was like, no, I still haven't seen it yet. But it's a deal where I'm just kind of in a in that meeting room in there watching film and dark rooms and kind of stay insulated and in the locker room and on the field. It's the way you got to be as a coach, though. You can't get caught up in other stuff.